All right. Hey, everybody. Today we're going to talk about like terms and unlike terms. Basically, uh, we're going to look at the zero property. We're going to simplify polynomials um, with algebra tiles and without them. All right. Um, so what I want you to think about is the zero property is if we start with something and we take something away that's exactly the same, we're going to end up with zero. Um, kind of like if you get robbed. All right. I got robbed. All right. So zero property is when we have one one negative and one positive um, tile of the same shape and they cancel each other out. This is kind of, uh, it's really important that you go back and look at lesson 5.1 and go and check out how to use algebra tiles if you did miss those classes. All right, so simplify the algebra tiles below using the zero property. Then show the same simplification using variables. Well, what we're going to do is remember that um, yellow right here is going to be positive and red is going to be negative. All right, so let's look at what we have here. We got three big um, x squared, so this is x squared x squared and we've got a negative x squared here all right so these two can cancel out and we're left with just x squared next we're going to look at our ones well we've got three negatives over here one two and we've got two positives so we can cancel out two each and we're left with a negative one all right next we can't cancel any of these out because it's just we've got four of them so overall our polynomial is going to look like this x squared this is that one. And then we've got plus, or no, sorry, minus, minus 4x. And then we've got minus 1. All right, so that's our polynomial when we use the zero property. All right, terms that can be represented by matching tiles are called like terms. And so examples of this would be 3a and 7a. Um, Notice how they always have the same variable, and those variables have the same exponent. All right, you can't put things together that don't have the same exponent or the same variable. It's really important. All right, so we can simplify a polynomial by adding the coefficients. That's the number in front. Um, so that number in front of the variable. All right, and they are of the similar terms. So we can simplify a polynomial by adding or subtracting coefficients of similar terms. And those terms, um, a term is made makes up of like 4xy squared, things like that. Um, use algebra tiles to simplify the following. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got six. Oh, so let's put these in blue. All right, so we've got six, blue, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and we've also got positive five here, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll put the negative in red. We've got one, two, negative two A, and we've got negative six. And what we can do is we can look and we can cancel. So what do we have? We've got two negative and two negative a and six a. So we can cancel two of these out and two of these out, and then we can cancel five of these out with five of these. And what are we left with? We're left with four a minus one. All right. So we can only put things together that have the same terms. All right. And we have a binomial. It's got two terms in it. It's also a polynomial because it's got more than one. The coefficient is 4, all right? And our constant is negative 1, and our variable is a. And you'll also notice that there's like an invisible 1 there, and that's our degree. All right, let's turn down to the next one here. I like to use um, shapes to organize my information. So we're going to put a square around anything with an x squared. And remember to keep that term, I mean the uh, symbol in front, so the negative or positive, it's got to stay with inside your box. 
And so we could go a circle around our constants. And we've got one right here. And then we can go a different color and put it all around our X's. And I'll make these rectangles just a little bit bigger so we can tell. All right, so in the end, we're going to go 4x squared, and we've got a negative 6x squared. Well, 4 minus 6, we're going to be in the hole, so it's going to be negative 2x squared. We're done those two. And then we're going to go to our circles. It just helps or us organize our information. And we're going to go 2 plus 1, and we get plus 3. And those are done. And then now we're going to go negative 7x plus 5x. So we're more negative, so it's going to be negative 2 minus 1, and we're going to get negative 3x. You'll notice that we've got a few different variables. We've got one variable, the x, and this is a degree 2. We always look at our highest exponent to name the degree of that polynomial. All right, next, we've got two more questions here. And so we've got uh, 19y squared minus 9 plus 5y plus 4y plus 15 minus 5y squared. So what we're going to do is we're going to organize our information again. Everything with an y squared gets the same shape. And everything with just a y will get into the same shape. And we got to make sure we keep our um, sign with it. All right. So 19y squared minus 5y squared, we're going to get 14y squared. Those two are done. And then we've got 5y plus 4y. And that's going to be 9y. Those two are done. I always like to go in descending order of my variables. So we start with the one with the highest exponent going down to the one without an exponent. Negative 9 plus 15, and we're going to be plus 6. All right. Go to the next one. Oh, look at this one's a little bit of a doozy there. We've got 4xy minus y squared minus 3x squared plus 2xy minus x minus 3y squared. Let's start with our 4xy, 2xy. And then negative y squared, we'll go over here. Oh, we got a negative 3y squared. And then we don't have anything. We've we'll put a triangle around here and then a long rectangle around there. They can only have the same shape if they've got the same exponent All right, and the same variable. So let's go with our negative y squared minus 3y squared. We're getting more negative, so we're going to go negative 4y squared. Those two are done. And then let's go to minus 3x squared. That's done. Next, we can go 4xy plus 2xy. That's going to be plus 6xy. Those two are done. And then we're finally left with just a negative x. It's really important. The things with the same uh, exponent and base, those are the only things that can go together. Finally, our last one. We've got 3x squared cubed. And we've got negative 3x cubed, or 8x cubed, sorry. And over here, we've got a plus 7x squared. And we've got a negative 8x plus 2x. And over here, we've just got a negative 6. All right, so let's combine like terms or use the zero property here. 3x cubed minus 8x cubed. 3 minus 8 is going to be negative 5x cubed. And the, cross those out so we know what we've done. And then we're going to go to plus 7x squared because we like to go in descending order in our degrees. And then we're going to go negative x squared plus 2x. And so we're going to negative 8x, sorry, plus 2x. So we've got negative 6x. And then we've got minus 6. All right. There's our polynomial. Now, I want you to check out page 2, 222. And those questions there, try a few of those. And we're going to, in class, we're going to explain how we can use like terms to simplify a polynomial. All right. Have a good weekend.